to it. Hello, hello. Hello. And you know, it's funny, um, they, we just call this a Tuesday broadcast. Mm-hmm. Last week it went up on Thursday because I was very busy Tuesday night. I didn't check. And people started emailing me saying, I can't see the broadcast. My mom did say that. And I said, Mom, it's there. I don't want to say, I don't want to say how that could have possibly been messed up. I don't want to say it. But I do think that, you know, tonight's might go up at 8 o'clock. Might not. Fingers crossed. Might not. Fingers what happened crossed. last week, Noah? Yeah, Noah. It wasn't set up for cross-posting. It was on the original. What happened? It wasn't set up for cross-posting. So it goes up on the original. So, Noah, who would, who would normally set it up for cross-posting? Mm-hmm. Me. So um, he would, right? Yeah, he would. Mm-hmm. So I shouldn't point out. No, you should. You should not. You don't want to. You don't want to upset anybody. Mm-mm. Mrs. Mrs. Chate. Mrs. Chate. Mrs. Chate probably sat there Tuesday night going, "Look at that, Vinny and Vinny screwed up again." Vinny and Vinny. Vicky and Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> Runs in the family. And Vinny and um, Vinny. <laughs> so here we are. We have a uh, we have a great show tonight. I, you know, well, I mean, or as I'm, I'm really. It would be Vinny and Vinny's wife because that's what everybody oh my calls God. me. Vicky has a major problem. No, no, right. no, 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 no. <laughs> It's because it happens, and everyone close to me sees it. I swear to God, every time I meet somebody that is out of our normal realm, it's, oh, Vinny's wife. Not, they never want to know my actual name. Oh, Vinny's wife. Hi, Vinny's wife. Okay, but when they say, hi, Vinny's wife, do you know who they're talking to? Yes, clearly so it's me. So what do you need? I guess this is one of those moments. No, no, no. So I recently met someone. I told you this story. Yeah. It was about two weeks ago. I'm checking into somewhere and she goes, are you Vinny's wife? Are you Vinny Brand's wife? And I go, oh, yes, I am. She goes, my kids were friends with your daughter. And I said, oh, really? And then she proceeds to tell me the whole story about horseback riding, except I was the one that took Tabby all the time to horseback riding. I organized it. I took her all the lessons. I did all the shows. You showed up one show a year, one show a year, and at the Christmas party. That's it. And she goes, oh my God, we love Vinny. Vinny's so great. Please tell Vinny we said hi. Oh, yes. Why does it bother you that people like me? That's so bizarre. It's not that I, it bothers me that they like you. I am literally Ari's wife from Entourage. She never had a name. I don't have a name. I'm Vinny's wife. Ari's wife had a name. No, she did not. What was Ari's na- wife's name? She entourage? never had a name in Entourage. That was Ari's the whole big wife's thing. name in Entourage was, was Ari's, Ari's wife. wife. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I, I told you. Rebecca. No, it wasn't. I'm asking. She had no name. That Are was you the, sure? That was the big running joke. She had no name. It's Melissa. Huh? It's Melissa. But well, during the show, they never actually say her name. No, he said her name. No, he didn't. He would say, my fucking wife, my fucking wife. That was the whole joke. Well, you're not that. You, you, people don't go, oh, you're Vinny's effing wife. No. On, so two weeks ago, I answered the club line. Hey, is this, uh, is this Lauren or Patty? No, it's not. It's Vicky. Vicky? Yeah. Vinny's wife! <laughs> yes, yes, it is Vinny's wife. It is Vinny's wife. Yeah. You're okay. right. They never said, they always refers to, referred to as baby Ari's wife or Mrs. Ari. Right. They never yeah. actually say her name. Yes, that's they, me. She, she said that? Yes. They actually never say her name in the show. You're telling me that Vinny's intern just told me. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm, Vin- I'm Vinny's wife. But I really loved it at one of the school events because she came up to me, this one mom, very sweet woman though, came up to me and said, oh my God, you're Vinny's wife, right? And I said, yeah, I'm I'm Vinny's wife. And she goes, well, Vinny and I have a lot of mutual friends. And then she named a bunch of friends that you're not actually friends with. I'm friends with them. (laughs) You couldn't even, like before we go to a party, I have to prep you who they are. You do. You actually have no idea who they are. You do. You know, people get on President Biden for needing to be prepped. (laughs) I totally need a prep. Totally. Before we go, and I'm like, remember, they have this kid, this kid, this kid. I still Repeat it back to me. Remember this husband, this is what he does. Yeah. Can I tell you something? I need a prep all the time. Yeah. Now, you know, we know Governor Murphy. He's amazing. He has it all up here. He does. All right. I can never be that good. I, I would have to go, hey, this is how you know I don't know your name. Yeah. If, if I say to someone, this is my wife, Vicky, 
And I don't say another word. Everybody uses that trick. I also do this a lot. Hey, what's your name again? Yeah. And, um, you well, know. I feel like that's more honest because, I mean, we saw a bunch of people down at the dock and they're like, Vinny! And then they said, let me introduce you to, to me, to other people so then I could say my name. Right. And even though we have been at the dock now for a couple years. I always need context. Yeah. Right. So I can see someone. I know I know them, mm -hmm. but I don't remember their name until I know where I know them from. Right. So I can look at someone and go, oh, I know them. For example, when you come home at night, then I go, that's Vicky. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. um, Do you get but, that? Yes, I get it. I'm sorry. Come on. You know what? There's 20 dogs in the house. It just, it's a torture. It's, it's torture. She'll sit with me. She'll just sit with no, me. No, I don't need a dog on the podcast. She's not going to bother anybody. Okay, but can I ask you a question? Yeah. Don't, doesn't it make you just a little nuts? The, the nonstop barking. Sometimes, but you know what? It reminds me of that movie Seems Like Old Times with Goldie Hawn. Oh, I hate all that movie. All of the dogs running all over the place. I like it. I love all the dogs. I really do. Like, there's such a joy. And she's old, so she, and we have the other dogs away right now because... They'll bark during the podcast and you can hear it. Oh, not like that dog. I just did that. She's sitting with me now. So she's perfectly happy. She's not going to bother a single soul. She's looking at you. You know what that is? <laughs> That's Vicky's dog. <laughs> it is my dog. Hi, Molly. Hi, so, dog. Vicky, what are we doing here today? Let's get pop into this. You know, first of all, the signs went up at the restaurant today. Yes. Victoria's Trotta Italiana. Yes. Oh, and I can't wait for the first person to say... Vinny owns Victoria's Trotta Italiano. <laughs> People have already said that to me. Like, they'll say, oh, Vinny's got his hand in everything. This is Vinny's. I can't believe it. And I said, well, it's both of ours. It's both I of ours. I tell everybody. I tell everybody. No, you're You're the brains. Yeah. Because I, it's not even that I, what I want to stop is. Hearing me. Complain about <laughs> <laughs> That's what you want. Is this whole milk, by the way? You know, is this your coffee? My, mine tastes like crap. I hate that. Let me oh. see something. I've been drinking the whole thing. Oh, that's better. But the coffees don't taste good. Oh, God. Yeah, it's oh, awful. Oh, God, what did you do? I, I just pushed the button. I don't know what happened. I they don't know. They both taste like shit. I, I don't know what you did there. Well, now we're screwed. Yeah. No I drink coffee. too much coffee anyway. Yeah, I, you do. My throat, mm -hmm. I think my throat is hurt by the fact that I drink as much coffee as I do. But the number, the sheer number of hours My. that I work. Noah said to me a couple weeks ago, I wouldn't say no. Here was Noah. Here was Noah. He calls me up. <clears throat> and I said, you know, we're going to do X, Y, Z. And he goes, hey, hey, uh, you know, I can't work the hours you work, right? Uh, I, he doesn't recall that conversation. Yes, he did. He said, I cannot work the number of hours you work. You know I, it is logical, though. I definitely can't work the hours you work. What do you yeah, it, he said it's logical. He can't work the hours that you work. Why can't he? Uh, probably because he wants to have a life. You know, th this is the whole problem with this this group of people that we call the next generation. Mm -hmm. It's it's no it works right. Yeah. Sophia got the intern job and immediately went on vacation. Mm -hmm. Instantly, right? Instantly. Mm -hmm. Punched in, out, and left. Yeah. We just hired a guy. Did we talk about this? We just hired a guy. Can we talk about it? Yeah. We hired a guy, and uh, I knew, I knew right away it could be an issue. And he quit after one day. He was 34 years old. I don't, don't be too specific. You don't want to trash the poor guy. He's 44 years old. 44. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, he was <clears throat> extremely nervous. Right. And because he's only worked... A different job since he was out of college right and to me it wasn't a difficult job that he was doing but he felt it was he felt it was too high pressure do, do you think that this generation is not geared for pressure no I think that I do think that the trends are they want to have a quality of life where when we were growing up you just you put your head down, you worked, and it was expected that you worked these monster hours. But you do agree, right, that that American work ethic is part of the whole machine that makes this country the powerhouse it is. We're raising a, a whole generation of people that don't know how to work. Yeah, but I, I don't know if I would necessarily agree with you on that, because in the 50s and the 60s, 
I mean, there wasn't as much to do, though, either. So You were around. I, I have read books, Vinny. No, I have read books. Haven't to the, no, listen. Now, I, I, I didn't finish my thought. Yeah, but I, go ahead. They would work Monday through Friday and like half of Saturdays. And then Sunday was the Lord's Day. Okay, but that's, that's a reasonable amount of work. But I think that what happened after the 50s and 60s, people started working 55, 60 hours a week. Right. I, I, I think that the norm now is between 50 and 60 hours. Our generation and the younger generation, they don't want to do that. They want to work 30 hours. Well, I don't know if they want to work 30 hours. How many but hours a week do you want to work now? Why wouldn't he put the microphone? I don't know. Why he, he for moved. both of us. For both uh, of us. Okay. So how many hours? How many, I mean, I, ideally, you set or that up better? well, if we were at the other place, we we would have both yeah. had two mics. Are you on camera now? I am. All right, okay. Go ahead. Ideally, what was the question again? How many, how many hours, hours a week like? would you like to work? I'm I'm very content with forty, forty plus or minus. Honestly, like I don't think it's too much. The fact that it is remote and also traveling for work. I think it's a good... I okay, mean, but I travel isn't work time. No, I know that. But the fact that I have to go somewhere else because being cooped up in a place if you're working remotely the whole time stinks. But also, yeah. you do get the ability to travel outside, but then you have your home office. So, 40. I like 40. So I mean, yeah, listen, how many I'll, hours a week do you want to work? I don't know. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't have a good gauge of it yet. I don't know. Here, here's what I think. Yeah. All right. This is what I really think. Mm-hmm. So in during World War II, mm-hmm. the whole country said we got to go build an arsenal mm-hmm. to win the war. Right. And during the Cold War, that mentality became the expansion of the American dream. I don't think that they have the vision of the American dream. I don't think they know what it means. I don't think, I really don't. You know, I was talking to someone. Well, I mean, don't you think so? Don't you think? that their foundation of work is somewhat changed than it would have been if they hadn't lived through the pandemic. I, think I mean, yes. the, they learned to segue to be remote. They learned to be virtual. They learned to, I, I mean, I was thinking of you today. So today you had a problem with your computer and it took you hours to get your email up and working. You had, to, you had to do it remotely with someone on the phone, someone that you were having difficulty understanding what they were saying. And you can no longer just go to a store and be like, fix my email. Like, everything is remote. But I think that was compounded by the, by, the, by the pandemic. And so now young people just want, you know, they like doing things remote now. In their pajamas, watching TV, not working. It's awful. We're heading toward a major problem. I agree with everything you said. I don't know if we're heading towards a major problem. But there needs to be someone that goes, no, get your goddamn pants on. And I'll tell you something. We had a friend for a while that was unemployed for a long time. Mm -hmm. And that individual would walk around in... Barefoot. It made me crazy. Barefoot pajama pants. It made Vinny crazy. It made me crazy. If I was unemployed... I would sleep with my boots on. So if someone called and said, I got a job, I'm already dressed. Mm. I'm coming. It takes four and a half years to build a destroyer now because of all the technological, right? But during World War II, we splashed one every 43 days. And my point is, if we got into a war tomorrow, our workforce would not be able to do that. I, no, I, I beg to differ. I think that they would rally and they would, they would do what was needed. But there's a whole lack of appreciation for the American... Hey, Sophia, do you think America is the greatest country on this planet? She's in the middle of texting no, right now. No, I want to know. I'm making comments. Oh, okay. <laughs> What'd she say? She's making comments. I thought she was texting. Yeah, do you I think, you do you think okay. this is the greatest country ever? Yeah. I mean, she, here's the yeah. apprehension. <laughs> yes. She's afraid. Yes, yes, She's afraid to be ostracized by her dopey liberal collegiate friends who want to tell you oh we da, ba, ba, ba. all my Shut friends up. are actually conservative so huh? all, like all my friends my, I go to a very conservative school she goes to a very conservative school she said all of her friends are conservative yeah, yeah. I love that school yeah Noah do you think this is the greatest country ever 
I do. I think there's a lot of opportunities here that nobody gets elsewhere. Is this the greatest country ever? I do. I said yes. Are we America right or not? Leave it. Get the hell out. Are we that? What? what was You're the fired. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you know, it's funny. Is It's not funny, actually. It's, it's terrible. I just read. I read it to Maddie and Tabby over the weekend. In North Korea, a baby, a baby, baby was jailed because they found a Bible with the parents. Why can't we get that kind of law and order here? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's a whole dialogue. I believe all the sinister forces that are trying to undermine us. I believe it all. Yeah. I believe there are bots out there making comments. Oh, well, well, I mean, listen, the advancements in AI, sure. China's trying to win the long game. Like, they're so smart. Like, let me introduce TikTok to Americans. Yes. But in China, it's only educational for the children, and it goes off after an hour. Yes. I mean, they're winning the long game. And we have a new TikTok video going up today on my social media. <laughs> oh, oh, that's right. I love TikTok. Sorry. <laughs> so, so, I love the TikTok. TikTok I really got to tell you. You do. You, Vinny is seriously. I'm not on social media that much at all. Right. I, I, I read a lot of news on my phone, but I'm not on social media. But this is Vinny all the time. Scrolling, scrolling. You know, I'm addicted. Scrolling. You I'm are. Addicted. And the thing is, it plays in his ears. So we can't always tell that, like, there are times that I think that you're invested in the conversation. No, nah, it's very that rare. I, I know. <laughs> it's very rare. I uh, know. <laughs> yesterday, we had a little, uh, a little get together with some friends. Yes. And um, the women, I, I said, what are we talking about? There was four women talking. Mm -hmm. And then our good friend, Kate, Mm -hmm. started talking about what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I was in that conversation for eight seconds. (laughs) As soon as I heard it, I'm like, oh, why did I ask? And I I had to punch out. Yeah. (laughs) Because I I don't care about anything. You don't care. No. No, No, I know. I know you don't care. Um, So we, I took Cassie to go see The Little Mermaid on Friday. With, With the new black Ariel. Yes. Which I predicted with your with your TikTok that you have that was fantastic. 6.5 million views. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't mind it at all, but there were people that were on there saying racist. It, it, they were, they were saying That I mind, thing. by the way, that I mind. So, I mean, so we went, we had the worst seats in the house. We were in the front row looking up like this. But right. The kids really wanted to go. So a couple moms and a couple kids went to go see, to go see it. And it was an extremely diverse cast. Which I liked. I, I really did like because they had a very diverse cast. In I did the Ariel. She's a cute kid. Really great Is actress. It live or animated? So they call it live action, but it's essentially a actors with green screens. Got it. You know, a lot of green screens, that kind of thing, with a lot of like mixed animation, and um. That wasn't the issue that I had with the movie. You had an issue with the movie? There's so many plot holes that it really, it just, and listen, I get it. It's about a mermaid. <laughs> I get it. You're I get having it. trouble believing the mermaid story? No, no, no. <laughs> but it was two hours and 15 minutes. It was already too long. Right. Already too long. And then on top of that, I had walked out to go to the bathroom really quickly with um, Cassie and, and our friend's daughter. And they ran ahead of me, and outside, there was a young man arguing with security. And it immediately makes you want to move the, leave the movie theater. Yes, except that I had seen this young man come in earlier, and he was not that any of this matters, but he was a white kid, and probably about 15. But when he, he was running in, you could see that he had special needs. And so I guess his mother let him go to the bathroom by himself. And he was acting up. But it's a what kid's movie. I, like yelling out, doing the movie, whatever. Like In the Ariel movie? Yeah. But I mean, in, 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 whenever you go to a kid's movie, first of all, you're in a kid's movie. So don't expect people to be quiet. Because right. you're with kids. So dial that down. We yelled out during an adult movie. We'll get to it in a minute. So... But also, anybody that watched this kid for a few minutes obviously knew he had special needs. 
But the security guard was intercepting him and not letting him go. Go back to the... Mm-mm. So a black family happened to be coming up and they were trying to calm him down. And he's going, I'm going back in to get my mom. And, and, and the security guard is stepping in front of him like, no, you're not. And it was too heated for no reason whatsoever. So then the mom of this other family grabs him and says, no, sweetheart, stay here. And now this whole family is arguing with the security guard because only the security guard can see, not see, that there's something clearly wrong with this young man. Right. And he's like, you're not going back in. So, but I've got the kids, so I just scoop back in. And now this mom from the other family walks into a packed theater and goes, where's Mary? Where's Mary? And Mary stands up and she goes, they got your kid outside, let's go. And oh, I love that. I did too. I because at first I was like, "Holy shit, is there going to be a fight in here?" But if she was getting that, she was getting that kid's mom and bringing him out to the security guard. But it's like, so he, what happened after that? The kid came back in. They let him back in because <gasps> I mean, he had special needs. But it's that kind of charged thing, like when you're going out in public now with all of. I'm relating this back to all of what you watch on TikTok, all those fights that you the watch. The fights and. That it was such an unnecessary thing. Like right. that security guard, it's a four o'clock movie on a Friday. The kid's 15 years old, dude. Like in, a, in an Ariel movie. Like let's, let's take it down a notch, you know? Right. Like really, like it's the right. movies. Right. And so what? Like I'm guessing somebody complained about the kid because he was talking. But again, who cares? Like, right. It's Ariel. But I did. I did. I had. A, I had a lot of issues with a lot of the plot points. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it did. I gotta say this about about everything you just said. Mm-hmm. I stopped listening about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. I guess not everything. Nah. It's so fine. so overall, the movie's good, right? The kids liked it. A lot of a lot of pushback on what they're calling cultural appropriation over Ariel. But I don't know if I'm right about this or not. But didn't Disney write The Little Mermaid? Is Disney? Yeah. Was a little, what, but is it an adaptation of a story? That I don't know. Can you guys find that out? I don't know. Because if Disney wrote Ariel, then you can. Make- I thought. I thought. I thought the Little Mermaid was Disney's property. Well, Disney owns the story for sure. Did they write the story? For example, uh, Mary Poppins was written by somebody, bought by Disney, made. Right. Disney didn't mm. write that story. Right. Now, my issue is always, okay, what did the author write? So in the movie Jaws, you couldn't turn the shark into a porpoise. The movie wouldn't hold the same, right? Right, right, right. But the black-white issue on Ariel doesn't bother me in the least bit. No, they, had, they, they, they really did have a diverse character, uh, cast of characters. And the, the, um, on a lot of the message boards that I was reading after the movie they had an issue more with the Eric because they said he looked too old. They're like, what is he, 45, for God's sakes? And in in the movie, he's supposed to be 21. Right. But he looks so much older than Ariel. Like, I don't know how old the actor is. You're telling me, even in cartoons, old men hook up with young girls. (laughs) Pretty much. (laughs) Yeah. Pretty much. That's the beauty of Hollywood. Yeah. They're so open and everything, but they're not. No. Um, it, it, it's kind of crazy. So, you know, this, this now is biting everybody in the ass, this, this, this whole issue, right? Mm-hmm. And it's so fragile now because the other thing the internet has been able to do is to, quote unquote, punish companies for their actions on either side of it, right? Mm-hmm. So Target now, $9 billion yeah. in market cap. Some pretty big money. Mm-hmm. Because they, uh, during Gay Pride Month, created a Gay Pride Mm -hmm. entryway now this is me no one celebrates white men there's no there's no white men day right no white men day i mean people used to say well every other day is white men day no we gave away so many days there are no white men days we gave away oh come on (laughs) you don't hear you don't hear that you don't hear that but, we gave away all the other days. Now the white men have nothing. Let me defend my. <laughs> let, me, let me defend. I don't think there's no walking that back. I just don't think there's any walking that back. But let me defend the statement. Mm-hmm. If it's true mm-hmm. that men ran everything, if mm-hmm. we ran everything, right. at some point, 
we had to decide to say, all right, let's let women vacuum. Mm. And then we moved up from vacuuming. Uh, well, it had to be, right? Mm -hmm. So in other words, if you said to me, I'll give you a good example. You run this house. You yes. run this house. This is your house. As right? example, when we were leaving the party yesterday. Yes, I'm going to get there. So you run the house. And on days that you don't run the house, mm -hmm. it's, it's you saying you can control this little aspect. If you didn't give me that control, I wouldn't have it, right? right? So I jokingly say we gave it out. Yeah. But if you say that it's true that we controlled it all, we had to give up control. There was no war. No. It was a cultural war. Now, you control the house to the extent that, and I don't worry about it. I don't worry about it because very honestly, when this whole thing implodes, I'm gonna go, hey, she ran this shit. <laughs> it was her, all right? So, so, Back to what I'm saying now, Target, and then we'll get to the party, Target decides to put out a thing. I guess the guy designed a bathing suit for transgenders that says it has a tuck pocket. Yeah. All right? And I think the hard part for someone like Noah is, you know, if Noah's going to transition, he needs a smaller tuck pocket. Vinny! <laughs> Noah's there going, I got room for a soda, too! <laughs> Anyway, uh, you know, when I work at Target, I'm not thinking about, there's nothing about a department store that tells me it's gay friendly or not gay friendly. No, yeah. I never walk in going, I'm amongst my people. My, so I don't think the display um, was a wise decision for them. Just carry the product because you know the marketplace mm -hmm. is going to get upset. Now, maybe someone transgender is watching, they're gonna jump on my shit, I got news for you, don't bother. I'm not big enough, no one's gonna care. Um, but I also welcome everybody, yeah, right? do. I don't care. Target now, $9 billion. Yeah, that's a lot of money, that's and a lot of money. Someone put up a picture yesterday of a liquor store, it's wiped out of beer for Memorial Day. And in the center, fully stocked with Bud Light, no way. Oh, yeah. Hun everything's gone except the Bud Light. Yeah, you know that VP of marketing will never get another job. Never like, get another job. Not anytime soon. And you know what? Had, had it worked, she would have been hailed as a brilliant marketer. Right. You know, had, it would have been like a, a brilliant marketing ploy. But... Um, and, and let me say this. All right. Who gives a rat's ass? No, I know. Right? I know. Dylan Mc McClavey. McClavey. What's her name? Dylan what? I don't, I don't I'm not sure Dylan. Dylan McCauley? McClavey? I don't know, yeah. I don't care what it is. That wasn't even a commercial. Did you know that? All that was is Budweiser sent her a personalized can knowing she would post about it. She's uh, a social media... Influencer. Influencer. So they sent her a can and she just said, oh, I got a can of best gifts ever. That's all it was. Mm. Now, <clears throat> if you send me a can... <laughs> I do the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no one should buy or not buy product based on something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you like Bud Light, drink it. No one's going to think anything of you. Yeah. By the way, this podcast is brought to you by Misunderstood Whiskey. <laughs> it is. Okay. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Yeah. Misunderstood Whiskey is going to sponsor our podcast. Oh, that's right. I did hear Greatest you Greatest whiskey there is. Yeah, yeah. How, how much do you like that drink that we make? The Gold Rush. Oh, it's it's super good. Yeah, you're not a whiskey drinker. I am not. But the misunderstood Gold Rush mm -hmm. whiskey drink. Right. Ginger and feud whiskey inspired right here in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And that drink at our bar is the number one cocktail going across the bar. Right. It is so good. It's summer in a glass. Summer in a glass. Right. I'll tell you what the drink is. I was I did a little drink at a drive in on the weekend and I had one on the way home and I got pulled over. And the cop's like, are you drinking? I gotta taste this. And he goes, oh. I okay, that I never understand. happened. I understand. <laughs> that Carry never on. happened. Carry on. Yeah. I said to him, that's a misunderstood whiskey. Yeah. So, yeah, try it. Yeah. We'll get a bottle for it next week. Um, did you hear the big news? That Wait. What? We're not done about how you run the household. Oh, I, Very oh, embarrassing oh. moment. So we're at a party. I wasn't embarrassed we're at all. Party. It was embarrassing for me. <laughs> we're at a party. And... Um, and Vicky wants to leave the party. I'm out shooting baskets with my friend Jason, mm -hmm. red blooded American man with an American flag patch on his shoulder on Memorial Day. I'm very happy. Vicky and Vicky goes, Kathy, Vicky, get your bags. We're leaving. I'm like, oh. I said, no. I said, say thank you. He's not. <laughs> Those, no, I they, I did. Up here, you may have said that. Up here, you may have said that. 
But you know what? In front of Jason, I don't care because, you know, every morning Kate and I meet Jason and, and we walk our kids and Jason will say every morning, oh, you know, that wasn't the outfit Kristen laid out. I'm going to get in trouble. Those aren't the socks. I probably mean the outfit for the kid. Yeah. Kristen runs her household too. It's fine. Every woman runs a household. I don't know one man that runs his household. Oh, no, I'm, who runs a Chate household? My mom, for yeah, sure. Yeah, 100%. Mm-hmm. Sophia? I have a different situation because I live in two separate houses with my parents, so. What'd you say? Oh, she has a different situation because she lives in two separate houses with her parents. Okay, so. I have my dad, honestly, so it doesn't really help your case. <laughs> yeah. I, are your parents divorced? Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know that either. Well, they never really got married, so they're not technically divorced, but. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. Yeah. Now the whole world knows it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you mad at us for asking? No. Okay. Oh, good deal. Yeah. So, so Vicky, that was a very weak moment. But the thing about it is, I didn't mind it at all. <laughs> I felt like I signaled to you that we were leaving. You weren't responding fast enough. We were leaving. I was shooting baskets. I didn't even know. Wow. Well, <laughs> this is how we'll get divorced too. You'll mm-hmm. just come in one day. We're done. We're done. Pack your shit, rack it up, wrap it up. Get out. So what do you want to talk about? So, well, two things. One, did you know that Russia issued an arrest warrant for Senator Lindsey Graham? I did not know that. Mm-hmm. What's he, why? Because we gave more money to Ukraine for the, for, the, for the war. And he made a statement that it was the best money we've ever spent. And that Russians are dying. So that's not, a very, that's not a very good. I mean, listen. No, it's not a very diplomatic they're statement. Real good, they're real people dying. They are real people dying. So they issued a arrest, an arrest warrant. I mean, which is, it's, it's like the equivalent of. Right. It's the equivalent of me saying, I'm going to stay at the party a few more minutes. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it, it really it has no bearing on anything. Right. But I felt that it was such an interesting thing to hear that like they're issuing an arrest warrant, I guess. He can never go to Russia. He can never go to Russia. He can never go to the Ukraine, maybe, because if the troops got him. Right, right, right. Right? And um, listen, I, the people that are with Ukraine, uh, I yeah. get it all. But at the end of the day, as it always is the case, you know, real real people are dying over yeah, there. Yeah, I know. It's terrible. It's terrible. The whole thing is terrible. Yeah. And, um, you know, I mean, I don't know how you took a comedy podcast and that book, <laughs> No, I have something positive, though, to end on. So Peter sent this in. So um, Peter sent us an article. Peter is our, is our writer now. Yes, He's our one writer. of our writers. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, if these two ever did anything, they would write an article or two. Mm-hmm. But go ahead. Yeah. Um, so about a young man that had been paralyzed. Paralyzed. And science has a thing where... It's called a brain-spine interface. Yeah. So if he thinks it, he can do it now, and he can walk. It's incredible. It is incredible. It is incredible. He can walk and use his hands, and I, I just, that kind of technology is just incredible. Well, you know, between that, uh, now that's the good side of technology. That's the area that we're going down that's great. And then, of right. course, there's the AI part of technology that's absolutely terrifying. Yeah. And the thing about this guy is it's, it's great, right? You got a guy that can walk, mm-hmm. which is incredible. And I'm, I'm happy that happened. But there's always another side of the coin. There's always another side of every issue. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know what the dark side of this issue would be. Mm-hmm. But there'll be a dark side. We, just, we don't know what it is yet. All right. Um, like, is, he, is it going to be a situation where he can use his hands and... He's in an argument with his wife, and he's thinking like all men do. I just like a backhander. <laughs> right. Wow. Oh shit! <laughs> I wasn't. I didn't mean. I mean, like in in that regard, right? There's gonna mm-hmm. be some. And think about it. Let's just say something happens, right? He's driving down the street. Someone cuts him off. I could kill that guy. Next thing, he's out there struggling. Mm. That, and then his defense in court. I just thought of who hasn't thought that. Mm, now, obviously, that's a good thought, yeah. I'm being a little jokey about it. Right, right. Right? But I read today mm-hmm. the flip side of every issue. So you know the 500-mile big plastic pit in the middle of the Pacific Ocean? Yes. It's a plastic. It's all floating. And mm-hmm. no, you're, you want that cleaned up, right? Of course you do. Who doesn't want that cleaned up? Right. But now there's an environmental group 
that said that that body of plastic is teeming with sea life, mm. mollusks and barnacles and all the things that adapted to that. Right. And so now they're saying cleaning up won't be so easy because you have to kill the sea life that's in there. Oh, the web we weave. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. And so you didn't have the kid walking. Peter wanted us to make some. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't. I read all of Peter's comments and I, I couldn't. I'm, that's just not me. Mm-mm. Peter's very funny, but the comments. He is were, very funny, but some of the stuff that he wanted to say, I can't. What are some of the things Peter wanted to say? I can't do. Just say what he wants um, to say. He said basically that scientists would put a subwoofer in him now and have like a lighted area, like a lighted LED area. I guess to go off. I, I'm not sure. And, and then he said something about like him going to an escalator and becoming like a like all crumbly because teenagers were messing with electronics by him. I, you know, it just seemed not. It's not me. Is I my comment okay? Your comment was fine, right? Because you're just thinking something and bang, your arms are doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, no, but Peter is very funny. I would love to have Peter because in Peter's voice it would work. Well, and Peter's, Peter's voice works because you know, we'll say something in a staff meeting and he has everybody cracking up because Peter has that way like you have where Let's not equate Peter with me. <laughs> All right, let's let's make a clear distinction, Peter, in case you're watching. There's me and you, <laughs> no, but Peter is able to say a lot of things that are off color that would not. I don't that, say off color things. Oh, you most certainly do. You most certainly do. But I cannot. That doesn't translate with me. No, and Peter is a very talented kid. He is very talented. Very funny, good writer. Yeah. Uh, he has a subject matter I'm dying to get into because now I'm reading, and we, we talked about it. We're not going to do it today, but we are going to get it done. That water is going to be the next war. We're going to fight the next war over water. Wow. And so, you know, we went and saw the, the Hoover Dam. And the Hoover Dam is responsible for irrigating large parts of Arizona, Utah, and California, right. along with New Mexico, and, and actually across the Mexican border as well. And so now all of that, mm-hmm. I'm reading about the dam doing that, and you, know, you keep reading about California water rights this is what they're talking about. California is going to go dry soon. Yeah. And uh, not just because Gavin Newsom is governor. All right, so Vicky hates Gavin Newsom. I, I do not like him. He's smarmy. He's very smarmy. smarmy. He's, he does not seem like he's a real genuine person. Do you remember when I hated the Cuomo brothers before you? Yes, you did, and you were right. I was so right about the You're Cuomo right. Brothers. They are so arrogant. Let's get on a list of people I hate that you don't hate. Mm-hmm. All right. The Cuomos, mm-hmm. you hate them now? Yeah, I don't like them now. Mm-hmm. Bill de Blasio. I don't like him. Noah. I like <laughs> Noah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so all right, let, let me get my real list of people I didn't like before people didn't like them. Okay. I was, I was right on the Cuomos. Yes. I was right on the Blasio. Yep. Names, you know people I don't like. I know, it's a long list. Um... It's a long list. It is a long list. A lot I, of politicians. Yeah. Well, you you wouldn't be cut out for politics. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't be cut out for politics. I am so cut out for No, it. you're not. Mm-mm. Why? But you get a lot of stuff done. Yeah, I get you shit do. done. You do. But the thing is, you speak your mind too much. Like, if I kick you under the table, ah, oh, stop kicking me. <sighs> I'm going to say what I want to say. Listen. Yeah. That's why guys like Chris Christie and Donald Trump got elected initially. Now, Christie won two terms of office. Yeah. Speaking his mind. Trump won two terms of office. Speaking his <laughs> That's a joke. Yeah. Well, um, we better wrap up. All right, we got to wrap up. Vicky, yeah. Vicky wants to go. You guys, uh, we love you having you here. And hopefully this will go up Tuesday at 8. Please keep following on social media. The TikTok is just amazing. The Tiki Tac. Tiki Tac. Yep. All right, go you guys. Bye.